Hello. So in this video, we're going to be doing uh, mathematical reasoning. I'm going to be introducing the idea of mathematical reasoning. That was terrible. Let's try that again, shall we? Jesus, focus, man, focus. Hello. So in this video, uh, I'm going to be discussing this idea of mathematical reasoning, and specifically mathematical reasoning in context of this sort of mathematical modeling idea. So the first question to ask and answer uh, would be sort of what is mathematical reasoning? So mathematical reasoning is, so mathematical reasoning is the process of converting information, so by which I mean typically something like data, information into mathematical language. So this typically referred to, this conversion is uh, typically referred to as quantifying, so quantifying this information uh, and then applying or using uh, deductive logic to uh, determine whatever desired results you're after. So this is sort of an abstract formal definition. But really what we mean when we say this is that mathematical reasoning is the process of taking something very sort of informal, something sort of introduced in some vernacular, meaning you know, everyday language, and trying to twist that into something that you can actually apply your mathematical te techniques to. Right? You need to go somehow from, you know, I have a problem doing blah, right? Like, you know, how many uh, people do I need or, or what kind of people do I need in order to successfully build a store, right? You need to take that sort of vague everyday language statement and convert it into something you can actually apply math to to get some sort of answer back, okay? So by way of introduction, I'm actually going to give you a real life example uh, so this actually happened to me uh, personally about a month ago, uh, you know, prior to filming this. Um, my mother, I was visiting my parents, and my mother uh, is building a, a wood fire kiln, which is a very rare thing uh, in, in the United States and really in the world. In fact, it's so rare that there's not really a default blueprint for how to build it. So she's building, she's sort of designing it from scratch and building it. Well. She's literally building it, and she has this problem where she had sort of started laying the base layer of brick, and she, you know, just as a simple sort of design here, she had this sort of rectangle in mind, <coughs> but she discovered that her, the, the lengths involved were too long for her actual straight edge, and she didn't have any tools handy that were accurate enough to actually measure the real, uh, in, in practice, angles of these corners. So these corners that she was looking at were, in practice, sort of unknown. She knew that she wanted them to be 90 degrees, and it turns out, uh, because of the mechanics of the wood kiln, that, that it needed to be sort of as exactly 90 degrees as possible. And so she came to me and asked, hey, is there a way you can determine if this thing is actually square in the sense of 90 degree, because it's, it's a rectangle, right? Square being the vernacular term, right? Is it a 90 degree angle on each of these four edges? So this is an exact, this is exactly a sort of mathematical reasoning at its start, right? So she came and asked, uh, can you figure a way to determine
if the angles are square. I'm deliberately putting this in quotes for reasons that will show up in the next video. So long story short, and by long story I mean that will be the next video, exactly how I did this, um, but long story short is I, I did come up with a way, and the way I did it was that I sort of looked at the problem that she gave me and I started applying mathematical reasoning. I started applying the mathematics that I'm familiar with to the example and started quantifying things, right? So really when I'm looking at this rectangle, I want to know, are these things 90 degrees, right? Now, geometry, right, being what it is, if you remember from your geometry classes in, in uh, grade school, proving things about rectangles is actually a bit harder than proving things about triangles. So I knew that she didn't have things to measure the actual uh, angles, but she did have stuff to measure lengths, right, tape measure. So again, long story short that I'll go into soon, I broke this apart and used the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, I really used the Pythagorean theorem in a real world situation. It actually happened. <laughs> so Pythagorean, probably spelling that wrong. And using this with some geometry, I concluded that if I could tell exactly what this length was, right, so if I knew sort of what these lengths and that length was, I could uh, determine, sort of determine, and indeed fix, if it wasn't the case, um, the angles being square. So as mentioned, I'm not gonna go into exactly how I did that in this video, that'll be the next one. Um, but the point is, is that the process that I used, right, was she came, she just gave me this, right? She said, can you figure out a way to determine if the angles on, on the base uh, layer of my kiln are square? I was indoors, not anywhere near her kiln, which was outside down a hill. Um, and so I was like, uh, probably, let me go take a look, right? I went out, I saw what her setup was, thought about it for a little bit, and I was like, okay, I can do this using geometry, and then I gave her the solution, right? I, I went through and, and sort of gave her the end result uh, of what I'll show you in the next video, and I used that by going from vague statement to sort of a, a picture of what was happening, right? This is the geometric reasoning, which I'll talk about more later, and then I applied actual analytic mathematics, right? Actual Pythagorean theorem, believe it or not, and determined and came up with a way where she could determine whether it was square or not without actually needing some sort of measurement tool that would measure the angle itself, okay? So this is the idea of mathematical reasoning. How one actually does this, I will do in the next video. All right, that is that.